Have a lift off. The roll program is in on time. Vehicle response is normal. TVC bus voltage looks good. Tank pressures look good. Okay, MDS. This program was in on time. The 45-year-old Voyager 1 space probe launched by NASA is still making its way across space far beyond our solar system to investigate the heliosphere and the interstellar medium. Exactly how far away from the planet is Voyager 1 now? There are now 14.5 billion separating the two of them. The legendary probe has been returning extremely valuable information to NASA ever since it was launched. Yet the latest unusual data sent by Voyager from the solar system's outskirts has left scientists dumbfounded, especially given that the probe has reported no major faults thus far. The data from Voyager 1 is crucial, so the engineer's team is working hard to decipher the strange signals it has been sending back to Earth. Today, we will discuss about Voyager 1 sending back terrifying data to Earth after 45 years. What basically are Voyager 1 and 2? What was the actual mission of Voyager 1 and 2? How does Voyager operate? What are Voyager 1 and 2? From the start of humanity onward, one thing has remained endlessly fascinating, space. From Earth, early thinkers and scientists learned about the cosmos by observing the motions of the sun, moon, and planets. Over time, humans learned to harness additional resources for their use, and their approaches to things like stargazing evolved away from using only the naked eye. Man created telescopes and then probes based on those, they were perfected to the point where they could be launched into space and investigate the cosmos. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, launched two similar probes in 1977. They were called Voyagers 1 and 2. The primary goal of these probes was to return information about the cosmos to Earth. Either something basic is wrong with Voyager 1 after it served humanity for further than 44 years in space travel, or something malevolent is prospering in the Voyager. On September 5, 1997, Voyager 1 was launched 16 days after Voyager 2. The average mass of each sailor was 720 kilograms, but Voyager 1 quickly passed Voyager 2 and became the largest. This makes sense given the significant differences in trajectory and velocity between Voyager 1 and 2. NASA struggles with the spacecrafts. The United States space program went through some changes throughout the 1970s. As the Apollo mission sequence wound down, NASA wrestled with the question of how human space exploration would continue. Spacecraft sent on the Mariner missions flew by Mars, Venus, and Mercury, increasing our understanding of the inner planets. A Mariner expedition to the outer planets was planned, but it would take at least 15 years to get there using chemical rockets. At the same time, groundbreaking research into gravity-assisted orbital routes was being conducted. Complex math and physics are behind the concept that a spaceship can exploit the gravitation of a new planet to gain significant speed, provided that the vessel is in the correct orbit. A larger planet's mass results in a greater gravitational pull and a larger boost. As the largest planet in the solar system, Jupiter provided the perfect launching point for space probes aiming to investigate the outer planets. An engineer named Gary Flandro realized in 1965 that by the middle of the 1970s, the outer planets would be positioned in a way that would allow a spacecraft to visit them all via a series of gravity-assisted boosts. This was not only a once-in-a-lifetime alignment. It wouldn't happen again for another 175 years and 176 days. Amazingly, just a few years before the planets aligned to make such a voyage possible, the technology to carry it out was established. At one point, the Grand Tour project was going to have a series of voyagers go out and check out all the outer worlds. The estimated cost of the project, however, had risen to about $900 million by 1972, when NASA began planning the creation of the shuttle. Voyager was the name given to the new generation of spacecraft that built on the success of the Mariner probes and incorporated lessons learned from Pioneer 10's flyby of Jupiter in 1973. The planning phase ended in 1977. 
If the original mission to reach Jupiter and Saturn was successful, NASA engineers hoped they might employ gravity-assisted trajectories to reach Uranus and Neptune. A spark of life was reignited in the concept of the Grand Tour. To conclude the Voyager mission, two spacecraft, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, were to be launched a few weeks apart. First, Voyager 1 was going to fly by Jupiter, and some of Jupiter's moons were relatively close up, scanning and taking pictures. Then, even more cautiously, Voyager 2 would sail by Jupiter. With any luck, Jupiter's gravity would propel both probes towards the direction of Saturn. Then, Voyager 1 would look into Saturn's rings and the moon Titan. By that time, Voyager 1 would have veered off the elliptic and away from every other planet in the solar system. In the meantime, Voyager 2 would travel to Saturn and a number of the planet's moons. Then, if it's still operational, it'll use Saturn's gravity boost to swing over to Uranus and Neptune on its way out of the solar system and away from the ecliptic. It seemed like a long shot, but surprisingly, it all went off without a hitch. The Voyager's Journey Information gathered from Jupiter, Saturn, and Saturn's largest moon Titan was relayed back to Earth while the Voyager continued on its way. The Voyager focused on the atmospheres, magnetic fields, and planetary rings of these worlds. It was the very first spacecraft to discover Jupiter's rings. Here, it's crucial to let you know that the Voyager's primary mission was to identify and investigate areas outside the heliosphere's rim. On August 25, 2012, it was the first spacecraft to leave our solar system and enter interstellar space. The heliosphere, the bubble-like area that surrounds the Sun and is made up of the Sun's outermost atmosphere, is the most simplistic way to describe the solar system's central star. An enormous heliospheric electromagnetic ejection was detected by the Voyager in 2014, and it lasted until the end of the year at the earliest. Because of this report, we now know for sure that the Voyager was definitely in interstellar space. After not firing its thrusters since 1980, NASA's Voyager crew put them through their paces in 2017 during a test of the probe's course adjustment maneuver. The Voyager's journey time was projected to increase by two or three years due to this test. As a result, the Voyager should operate flawlessly until at least the year 2025. After that time, the instruments will likely stop working since the thermal electric generator will no longer be capable of generating enough power. However, the Voyager has recently begun transmitting anomalous signals, which have perplexed astronomers and scientists. Nobody seems to know which Voyager is or how or why it is receiving these messages. The Working of Voyager NASA said the Voyager always keeps an antenna trained on Earth. Another similar antenna is responsible for collecting data from outer space, while this one relays information back to Earth. The gathered information from the Voyager is transformed into radio signals and sent back to the surface. From the current location of the Voyager in orbit, the signal will reach Earth in around two days. NASA takes the radio transmissions from the Voyager and converts them into numerical sequences so that scientists may analyze them. What's the actual issue? The sequences of numbers and the signals that Voyager just sent back don't make any sense. This may be due to a technical issue with the Voyager, or it could be a sign of the existence of aliens, although the latter explanation is by now a tired cliché. Since none of the latter's safety procedures has been activated, it has been declared out by NASA's staff. The alarm system on board will activate if the Voyager goes missing, so they say. However, since the alarm hasn't gone off, NASA assumes that barring a slight glitch in the Voyager's systems, everything is fine. Alien life has not discovered it. Voyager and the Golden Records The Voyager has something NASA called a Golden Record, which is an amazing fact. Two photo disks from Earth-based visuals and audio are housed within the Golden Records. Everything from birdsong and wind to the sounds of whales and thunder to greetings in 55 different languages can be heard. Carter, president of NASA, and Waldheim, the agency's head of security, each sent messages in print that the Voyager carried. Also included in the 90-minute golden recording is music. The music library on the cruise ship is an international assortment of classics, including Beethoven's Evergreen Fifth Symphony and String Quartet. Only when found by intelligent beings will the phonograph begin to play. After all, late NASA consultant and advisor Carl Sagan affirmed as much when he remarked, 
the spacecraft will be encountered and the record played only if there is an advanced spacefaring civilization in interstellar space. That the record hasn't been performed so far is proof that no extraterrestrials are now in or around the Voyager. Please leave a like and subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned to this channel till the next video.